Hi, my name's Drew and I'm going to be walking you through the Great Escape by A-Liner today. So starting right up here with the coupler, we're going to go over the loading and unloading procedure. Uh, what you got here is a very kind of utility trailer-esque in design. Um, this is going to be your coupler lock here. Uh, it would be locked in that position when it is fully back and you want to make sure this secondary uh, mechanism here is locked back. So that's going to be the fully locked position. Unlock is as you saw it, straight up and down like that. So this is going to be your starting position. We're going to uh, raise this jack up about three inches above your uh, ball and drop. We're going to, of course, center your ball and drop underneath the coupler here. Then we're going to go in the opposite direction, lower that jack back down. Once we are sitting fully on that ball, we're then going to go ahead and lock that back. Again, we're going to pay special attention that we are fully engaged and locked there on that coupler. Uh, from there, it is very important that these uh, safety chains are crossed underneath the coupler uh, and you're looking for two things. So that you're looking at the, uh, you want to, of course, have enough room to make your uh, turns properly, but uh, you don't want to have too much room that these are going to make contact with the pavement. Uh, it is state law in Texas that these cannot make contact with the pavement at any time. And also they do need to be crossed and hooked onto the receiver uh, in that cross fashion there. Now riding right beside those, you're going to have your emergency breakaway cable. It's wrapped up here with the zip tie, uh, but in theory, that's going to be riding right next to those tow chains. And it is very important that we have three connection points on the receiver. Uh, of course, two for the tow chains, and then this one uh, riding right next to them, utilizing either a quick link or a carabiner to make that connection there. Uh, also up front here, we have your seven way wiring here. This is going to give you uh, full function to your tow vehicle's braking system, uh, lights, uh, <laughs> braking system, lights, uh, as <sighs> braking system, lights, and charging system as well. So when this is plugged into the bumper of your vehicle, think of it at that point as one large vehicle. So this is going to plug into the, cor the corresponding seven-way receptacle uh, in your bumper. And again, that's gonna give you full function to your vehicle's charging system, braking system, uh, and lights. Uh, so hopping right up here to your propane tanks. You have two 20-pound propane tanks. Uh, they are full for you today. Open and close valve there on the top. I find most people are somewhat familiar here uh, with this style of propane tank. Uh, in between the tanks, you have your uh, automatic switchover propane regulator here. Uh, idea being that you are going to initially directionalize that on your uh, primary propane tank. So we would directionalize it here, make sure this valve's open. And as long as we had the valve open here on this secondary tank, once it used your primary's tank completely, it's going to automatically switch over to your secondary tank. Uh, now, if we want to stop that from happening, all we have to do is go ahead and close this valve on the secondary tank. Uh, if we go ahead and do that, then we would have to, uh, once we've depleted this primary tank, we're going to manually go ahead and switch that over to that secondary tank and then go ahead and turn it here on the valve. Uh, now, you do have a flow indicator there in between the two tanks. Uh, green means you have a good flow. Red would mean that you have no flow. So what you're seeing there uh, is we have this valve here on this tank open. And this one's closed. When I switch over to this tank, it turns green. When I switch over to this tank, it turns red. Uh, tanks are separated by a T-bar with an oversized uh, wing nut. Uh, to remove these tanks for servicing and filling, we're, of course, going to remove the wing nut here. We then just rotate this T-bar out of the way. Uh, of course, unscrew your uh, pigtails here. You can then go ahead and pull those out, uh, get them either filled or exchanged uh, as you like. And then when it comes to putting them back in, uh, just make sure they're sitting here in the little valleys on the T-bar. And then once everything's orientated properly, you can go ahead and put the wing nut down and of course screw that down all the way. Uh, behind that, we have a brand new Interstate d tuckle battery. Uh, biggest thing with this is going to be just good general battery maintenance. What that's going to entail for you is two or three times a year, we're going to go ahead and pull these vent panels up. There is a clear marked water line inside and we are just going to maintain that water, water level with distilled water. Uh, also, for periods of long-term storage, it is very important that we uh, disconnect that battery. Uh, that battery disconnect here is located on the underside. 
and it is clearly marked with on and off. So on's gonna be that yellow, and if I switch that over to off, that's going to isolate this battery uh, and essentially accomplishes the same thing as physically disconnecting the battery. You're gonna use that for periods of long-term storage, keeping any nominal or phantom draws off of that 12-volt system, keep this battery in as tip-top shape as we can. So moving on here, uh, coming around here to the side of the camper, uh, we have a cable inlet. So this is a standard RG6 cable fitting. This is just a pass-through connection to the designated TV area meant to accommodate a park cable service or an aftermarket satellite package. And again, it's just a pass-through connection that uh, transitions at the television. Uh, beside that, we have a Anderson-style solar plug. Now this is a direct connection to your battery bank up front. It's designed to accommodate a portable solar panel, and essentially those portable solar panels are, are plug and play. So uh, you make your connection here. The charge controller is gonna built, be built directly into the panel itself. Uh, so it's kind of like a set and forget. So move that out after the sun. It's gonna take in energy as needed and not when it's not needed. Uh, we also, beside that, have your fresh water connection there or city water connection. Uh, that's what you're going to use in the capacity of an RV park, or if you have full-time access to running water, you're going to use this guy here. Uh, when talking about city water connection or your fresh water connection, uh, it is very important to talk about water pressure. So this unit is designed to have a working water pressure of 50, uh, 40 to 75 PSI. Um, the water pressure regulator that we include with the unit is going to regulate that pressure in between 40 and 50 PSI. If that, however, is not high enough pressure for your liking, Feel free to upgrade to a high flow water pressure regulator or an adjustable water pressure regulator. Just please keep in mind that we do not want to exceed that 75 PSI water pressure. Uh, now those water pressure regulators, they're all going to hook on directly to the spigot side of the hose. We then hook your drinking water hose onto the water pressure regulator and then ultimately onto the camper by rotating this trailer bound connection. Very important again that we do always use a water pressure regulator. If one were to get lost, damaged, or stolen, or whatever, please make sure you replace it before using the unit again. Uh, we don't want to have this thing full open with uh, you know, water pressure. Uh, down below here, we have your gray water dump valve here. Of course, this unit utilizes a cassette style toilet. So uh, the only holding tank essentially that we have is going to be a gray water holding tank. Uh, does have a standard uh, Bladex valve there. To open that tank, it is just going to be a six inch pull forward in this case. Uh, they do make reducers here for this dump valve here that will reduce that down to a garden hose uh, sized fitting. That's going to allow you to route your water away from the campsite if you choose to do so. Also down low here, we have your uh, stabilizer, jack crank uh, stabilizer jack and uh, the accommodating crank handle. Uh, name of the game with these is going to be a light touch. So once you're certain of your level, leveling front to back is going to be done with the main tongue jack up front. Leveling from left to right is going to be done with the tires and a leveling kit. Once you're in certain of your level, you're then going to run these jacks down and you're going to do so by uh, placing this over the stud and then cranking it down till you make contact with the pavement, maybe a quarter turn more. Same on the way up. There's no need to really hammer those down in either direction. They'll stay in better shape longer for you as long as you kind of use a light touch. A uh, couple of all weather 110 volt, uh, 15 amp outlets there. Uh, nothing too crazy with that. Uh, beside that, we have, your, uh, we have your propane burning furnace. Now that is your exhaust vent that you're looking at. Uh, please be aware, uh, please make sure that we do not restrict the flow of that. Uh, we are letting that breathe properly. It does blow very hot air when it is on, so it's gonna melt anything you put in front of it. Uh, also very important is that we protect not only the furnace, but all of the propane appliances further with a bug screening material. Uh, mud divers in particular are attracted to the smell of propane. Uh, what they like to do is crawl as deep as they can within the appliance, uh, build their dirt nest on the inside, and essentially uh, uh, leave the, the uh, appliance inoperable. So it's very costly to go uh, back after the fact and get all of those nests cleared out. Uh, so prevention is kind of the name of the game with that. And again, you're going to do so with a, 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 bug, style, a bug screen. Uh, and that goes, again, not only for the furnace, but the refrigerator and uh, all of the propane burning appliances. Uh, 30 amp, 110 volt power connection here. This is only going to plug into the unit one way. You have one L-shaped prong, so it is going to only be accommodated one way. We go ahead and plug it straight in. 
Give it an eighth inch turn to the right, that locks it in. And we do have a secondary collar here to screw down, lock it in further, uh, keep somebody from potentially tripping over it and, and yanking it out. Uh, tire pressure and lug nuts, a very important thing to talk about. Your tire pressure is going to be uh, 65 PSI. Now that's going to be the max tire pressure rating, not only stamped in the sidewall of the tire, but also on this data tag here. Uh, we run tire, we run, we run tire pro trailer tires at the max tire pressure. Uh, that's what you always want to maintain. So all the weight ratings of this unit we're taking with that uh, 65 PSI uh, tire pressure. That's going to give you the highest flexibility, whether you're completely full or completely empty. So, so maintain that 65 PSI. Also, these lug nuts have been torqued down to 100 foot pounds here in the shop. Uh, it's very important that as these wheels are breaking in that we are maintaining that 100 foot pound torque. Manufacturer recommends a retorque procedure the first 15, 25, 50, and 100 miles of initial travel. We want to go ahead and lock those down, retorque those down to 100 foot pounds, make sure they're not working themselves loose. Manufacturer further recommends that at the start of each trip, there on after, uh, that we do go ahead and check and still make sure that they are maintaining that 100 foot pounds of torque. Uh, outside shower here, I'm not going to spend too much time with that, nothing too crazy. You have access to hot and cold water, you have a nice little holder there for the head. Uh, everything does coil back inside of there uh, and stores in the shower itself when you shut the door. Uh, refrigerator panel here, now we have your vent panels removed. Uh, let's start out again with the uh, notion that we are going to go ahead and further screen these in uh, to keep those mud divers and flying insects from nesting in there. So that's number one, we got to keep those insects out. Other than that, uh, you're going to go ahead and give this a visual inspection a couple times a year, make sure nothing's gotten in, and you're going to be good to go. Uh, but again, the screens are very important. When it comes to putting these vents on, we're going to go ahead and line the tabs up here on the top. We're going to seat the uh, square holes on the bottom and then once we are fully flush there and it looks like this one might be uh, give me a little bit of problems here but once we are fully flush there and that's what we're looking for uh, we can go ahead and give these a little uh, turn that's going to keep them locked in I go back and kind of make sure that they are in fact locked in you don't want one of these blowing off when you're going down the road uh, up top here we have your hood vent for your uh, stove top. Now this has two little little tabs there. Uh, it should be closed when you're going down the road. You're going to want to make sure you close it when you're done camping. And before cooking a meal, we want to go ahead and make sure we open it and we do so just by uh, lifting up on those tabs. Coming around here to the rear of the unit, uh, we have your Thule crown awning here. Uh, crank handle is already installed here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and put it in. It gives it a uh, counterclockwise to lock it in and that is uh, uh, counterclockwise locks it in but you have to go clockwise to actually get it to come out and so once we go ahead and run this thing out um, get a little bit you have a little bit more room than that to run it out but I'm not going to run it out fully uh, just enough to get hand on these legs now these legs go ahead and pivot out like so and then they go ahead and fold down now you have uh, different adjustments, of course, this main sliding adjustment here. You also have a detent there as well, so you can actually extend uh, that leg in three positions. Uh, you can go all the way down to the ground and stake it in if you're inclined to do so. Uh, that's generally not the most popular option. It kind of leaves this for, for people to walk into or, or uh, you know, whatever. But uh, you can also come back to the trailer uh, to, to accommodate these locks. You, you start out with in the open position here, uh, make sure the foot seats properly, uh, bottom first, then you slide that down and lock it in. Of course here, uh, we would want to make sure we locked these in as well. Uh, and to do so, you're going to come here to this plastic piece and you just go ahead and push that up towards the uh, top of the awning that's going to go ahead and lock it in. Now here on the collapsing side of it, we're going to just unlock the foot here. Again, push that detent, uh, allow that to feed up, make sure we're unlocked here. And then we do just want to pay special attention that our foot is resting flat there on the uh, front of the awning, and that's going to allow that to, to fold back in. Now we're going to come clockwise here, or excuse me, counterclockwise to bring it in. And again, that awning handle likes to lock when you're actually 
rolling it back in because it locks in that counterclockwise position. And that just so happens is the direction you're going to pull it back in. So once it, you're fully closed, you just push up on the handle, then rotate it clockwise. It's going to drop right out of there. Uh, you can, of course, store this underneath the couch or wherever you decide to do. Uh, here on the back side, nothing too crazy. Of course, you have your porch light, tail lights, marker lights, things like that. All right, so what we have here is your cassette toilet. This is a very cool kind of self-contained unit. Uh, what it does is it keeps you from having to, the, them to uh, have a secondary black water holding tank. Uh, it's a nice little self-contained unit. It stores everything nice and easy. Uh, but to actually remove it for dumping, you're just going to uh, lift up on this green tab and that's going to allow you to pull it out. Now, when you do pull it out, it keeps everything nice and, and it kind of like covers itself on its way out so you're not staring your waist uh, when you do uh, pull it out. And then from there, uh, you would, of course, you have a little handle here and, uh, you know, wheels on it, kind of like a, a roller bag or whatever. Uh, but when it comes to dumping it, you're going to flip this guy out here and you are going to unscrew this. That would allow you to then uh, push this green button. That's going to feed air to the backside of that tank, keep it from any glugging or anything. Uh, on the way uh, when you're dumping it. And then you just, of course, go to a dump receptacle and go ahead and dump that. Uh, now, this uh, toilet is, is unlike some other cassette toilets that I've saw, uh, where this actually uses a, the, the unit's water supply for flushing and things like that. So there's no secondary uh, fill spot or anything like that. And then when we uh, go to put this in, it's gonna go ahead and automatically return it uh, to be ready for service. So once it's in, it moves all that stuff out of the way uh, and it is ready for use uh, once you do go ahead and put that inside. Uh, coming around here to this side, uh, not too terribly much to speak of. We do have your six gallon capacity suburban water heater here. Uh, now this is a propane only appliance. It's gonna uh, run on propane gas with 12 volt ignition. Uh, manufacturer recommends two very important things. Number one is going to be anytime the unit's gonna be in storage for more than seven days, we wanna go ahead and drain this water heater. Uh, to do so, we're of course going to let it cool down first, uh, three to four hours at least. Uh, once we are certain of the temperature, we're going to depressurize it. Now in this specific situation, uh, easiest way to depressurize it is going to be right there at the kitchen sink. What we're going to do is we're going to cut the inflow of water to the unit. So if we're hooked up to city water connection, we're going to physically turn that valve off. If we're running off the holding tank, we're going to cut that water pump off. So with no new water flushing or new with no new water running into the unit uh, we're going to turn the hot side of the spigot on uh, the hot side of the fixture on in the kitchen uh, once that water has flown from the fixture it's blown off that excess pressure we're then safe to to drain this so uh, once we're depressurized it we're going to come here with an inch and a sixteenth wrench or excuse me inch, inch and a sixteenth socket and extension and we're going to go ahead and back that drain plug uh, out. From there, the remaining, you know, five, five or so gallons of water is going to evacuate the appliance here. Now this drain plug is not only a drain plug, but it is also a uh, anode rod. An anode rod is a, a three quarter inch by 12 inch piece of magnesium. Uh, acts like a magnet for hard water deposits, calcification, things like that. They deposit onto the uh, anode rod itself as opposed to the inside of the water heater. Uh, it is a consumable part, expect to get a year or two in between anode rod changes uh, before it needs to be replaced. Again, you're going to be draining this water heater and expecting that anode rod anytime the unit's going to be in storage for more than seven days. Uh, now, when you start your camping trip, this water heater is going to be, uh, it's going to be initially empty because you have drained it previously. Uh, so it is important that we do prime the water heater. Uh, what we're going to do in that uh, scenario is, of course, at this point, we're going to introduce water, a uh, flow of water into the unit. So if we're, uh, again, using city water connection, we're going to turn on the fixture. If we're using potable water, we're going to flip on the water pump. Uh, but if we have water running into the unit itself, we're then going to turn the hot side of the spigot on. Uh, from there, that flow initially at the fixture itself is going to be very spitty or interrupted. Uh, what's happening is it's actually pumping six gallons of water into the tank here before you actually see it at the fixture. So once that fixture or once that flow normalizes at the fixture, that is your indicator that this is uh, clear for takeoff and ready for use. Uh, 
Also, uh, going to bring up one more time, it is very important to screen off these louvers and this grating uh, with an aftermarket bug screen to keep those mud daubers and flying insects from the unit itself. Uh, then we have your potable water fill here. Now this is going to fill that onboard water tank. We're going to stick a drinking water hose directly in there, uh, fill it up to it overflows. Uh, once it is full, we're going to go ahead and cap it off. And again, this is pressurized from the 12 volt water pump that is going to be switched on on the inside. We'll get to that then when we uh, get to the inside. Uh, I think that just about covers it here on the, the exterior of the unit. Um, you know, some things you can see here from the front is the solar panel, uh, the antenna, things like that. Uh, but we're going to talk about all that there on the inside. Alrighty, here in the entry door, uh, first up is going to be your refrigerator. Now, uh, if we lift this panel here that uh, exposes the controls, uh, you of course have an on off switch there. Uh, once you initially turn that on, it's going to kind of go through a boot up, uh, you know, start up menu. And then once it, it, it uh, lights all the lights up and then dims back down, you're ready to go. Uh, now you can switch, uh, this is a three way refrigerator, so it's going to run on DC, it's going to run on AC, and it's going to run on propane gas. Now this middle button is going to switch from uh, whatever selection you're currently on to, to DC. And then this third button is going to switch from uh, whatever selection you're on to AC or gas, if that makes sense. So this, this one switches in between AC and gas, and this one just switches from whatever, whichever one of those you are on to DC. Uh, this is going to be your temperature control. You have five levels of uh, coolness, and they are labeled cold to coldest. Uh, here on the inside, nothing too crazy. It is very much like a dorm style refrigerator. It has the flip down ice box. Uh, again, just nothing too exciting there on the inside. It does run on, on all three of those sources. Uh, you'll use those sources as they present themselves uh, out there in the wild. Uh, we also have your fire extinguisher here. Now this has a green test tab on the top. We do want to go ahead and make sure we are testing all of our safety equipment every time we take the unit out. Uh, to do that specifically with this fire extinguisher, we go ahead and push that test tab down. If it springs back, that means we have life uh, in the unit. Uh, if not, it's time to pull out and replace. Uh, we have your fan and your cooktop or your fan and your light here uh, for the stove. Uh, and then we also have your cooktop here. Now this is like a very kind of basic kind of Coleman style cooktop, although this one is Dometic. Uh, but it doesn't have a sparker or igniter, so you're going to want to make sure you carry a long stem barbecue lighter with you. Uh, you'll go ahead and turn the knob to light there and while holding it in, you're going to put your flame directly on the burner. Uh, once you see that flame there, give it a couple seconds longer to heat up that thermal coupler. Then you can actually choose the, the height of your flame. Uh, up above that, we have a standard high point uh, microwave, turntable style microwave. Um, pretty much what you have at home, nothing too crazy. Uh, will operate uh, basically the same as, as any other microwave you've, you've ever used. Uh, here on this side, uh, we have of course the light for your bathroom. And we're going to go ahead and talk about the bathroom here. Um, of course, this is the, the business end of the cassette toilet. Uh, you have your button here. That's how we're going to feed water to the unit itself. So we push that button. That's actually going to pump water into the bowl. Uh, and then when we want to flush, that's going to be this gray handle here. And we do just go ahead and pull that out to flush. Uh, you also have your standard kind of RV style uh, shower head um, and valves down here. Uh, what that means is it's going to have an on off switch on the actual head. Uh, that is designed to help you conserve uh, hot water. So what you have here is a standard RV style shower. Uh, it's going to have a on off switch here on the actual head. Uh, that's going to allow you to conserve your water supply. Uh, you'll probably find yourself in these smaller units doing military Navy style showers. Um, and, and again, in the, in the, the uh, attempt to conserve your water. Standard kind of hot and cold mixing valve there. Uh, you know, low down in this scenario, uh, but still very, very usable. Um, oh, we also have a exhaust fan here. Now this is a very simple fan. Uh, to open it, you just physically push up on it and then uh, push that red button. That's going to turn on that fan. That's going to help suck any moisture out of the air when you are showering. 
Uh, one thing, you do want to make sure you close it uh, before going down the road and make sure you turn it off. Uh, above my head here, we have your uh, second piece of safety equipment. That's going to be your smoke alarm. Uh, now, this rush runs on a 9-volt battery, just like at home. It'll let you know when it needs to be changed. And again, we recommend that you do go ahead and test it uh, every single time you take the unit out. Uh, now, these lights in particular, they have the switch right there on the fixture, easy on-off switch there. Uh, but you do also have some light switch here with some dimmer. So this one's going to be... Uh, the main floor lights and then again that does also have a dimmer on there if you want to dim those down uh, and then this one's going to be the overhead lighting again those have dimmers there if you want to go ahead and, and set the mood uh, or adjust those in any way uh, then beside that we have their outside porch light that's going to be that amber colored light we saw here on the rear of the unit uh, and then we have your water pump switch here uh, that's going to be the 12 volt water pump we're going to use that in conjunction with the uh, potable water holding tank to draw to pressurize that tank and draw that water up to the fixture here both the cooktop and the sink kind of have this uh, very nice tempered glass tops it's going to kind of extend this countertop space uh, and make it very usable uh, now here on the actual fixture down and out is going to be cold water up and out is going to be hot water so, and it is it's a little hard to see but it is labeled there uh, red and blue uh, you know kind of kind of straightforward cabinetry here nothing too crazy uh, that we do need to speak of uh, we do have your your level indicator there now that's for the gray water that's going to tell you when your gray water is full it's just going to illuminate that light uh, tell you it is time to go ahead and dump that uh, now we have your water heater switch here uh, if I go ahead and turn that on that red light's going to come on with that switch uh, that red light's going to stay on until it, it lights now it, it may flicker on and off while it's going through that lighting cycle but a good rule of thumb is, is if you come back five minutes later and that red lights on that means that that water heater has not lit uh, for whatever reason generally it's because you uh, you're either out of propane gas or you have the valves on top of the tanks closed uh, very unlikely in a unit of this size that the gas just hasn't reached the appliance yet but I guess it is possible so in the event that you come back five minutes later and that red lights on all you have to do is turn the switch off, turn it back on, or excuse me, turn it off and then turn it back on. And that will allow that to recycle another three times. Generally, as long as you've corrected the issue, it's going to light on the first try of that second cycle. And then right beside that, we have your thermostat there for the propane burning furnace. We'll go ahead and, and really it is just a slider here. So you choose a, a comfort level. It kicks on that blower motor immediately. 16 seconds after that, it actually ignites. By that 30 second mark, it's producing noticeable heat. Uh, and we do have a ducted system here. So most of your heat is going to come uh, from these ducts you see here. Uh, you should have no problems at all uh, keeping this unit either hot or cold. It's a very small unit. Uh, the heater and the air conditioner are, are pretty much oversized for the unit, which here in Texas can be a good thing. Uh, up here on the AC controls, our indicator is going to be forward facing. So that's how we're going to know what mode we're on. Uh, and we have, we have low fan option, and then we'll have a secondary low fan option. We have high fan, and then we have low cool, and we can hear that compressor kick on. And then we have high cool. Uh, you have a thermostat here. You can choose um, you know, your, your uh, intensity of that coolness. Uh, there with that thermostat uh, and you probably will again be using that uh, specifically because of the size of the unit you have filters on either side of the unit they have tabs you can go ahead and pull those loose those are washable filters you should uh, get many years of service from them but when they do need to be replaced you can source those from any RV dealer there so down here you have your uh, fuse panel breaker box uh, on the left side here we have your 110 volt appliances those are your standard uh, resettable breakers uh, probably have some of those in your fuse panel box at home and then we have your replaceable automotive blade style fuses there on the right for your 12 volt appliances not a bad idea to pick up a variety pack of fuses keep them with the unit um, in the event that you need to change one to the right of that we have your carbon monoxide LP leak detector uh, that is wired into the 12 volt section of the camper and is your third piece of safety equipment uh, and you do want to test that again every time before taking the unit out. Uh, so go ahead and push that button, uh, let it 
alarm to you, make sure it's working properly. It is going to tell you which one of those gases it is sensing in that event uh, by the uh, lights here on the unit itself. Uh, now, before we demo this table here, let's go ahead and talk about the windows. Now we have uh, these pull down windows. You add a nice screen there as well as your privacy there. Uh, also, you can kind of set these to a multi position so you can really choose how far you open them and then you're going to tighten up these struts that's going to go ahead and keep that window open and then again you can pull down here uh, on the way in you do have a vent option and it's worth talking about here uh, if we go here in that middle slot there that's going to give you a vent option still have a fingertips worth of opening there uh, but the camper is still relatively secure of course, that is only designed for when you're uh, stationary. When you're going down the road, you need to pull all the way back past that plastic and go ahead and latch it down there. Um, I guess TV, soundbar, we can talk about that. That is pretty straightforward, though. Um, TV and soundbar are going to have their own remotes. Uh, you know, very you know straightforward operation with those. Um, we also have your solar charge controller here. Now you probably saw that panel on the front of the unit. Uh, this is your charge, your solar charge controller. This is gonna give you, uh, of course, your battery voltage, uh, how many amp hours we're taking in via solar. Of course, we're on the inside now, so we're not taking any in. Uh, that's essentially the brains to that solar operation. It's gonna intake energy as necessary and stop when it's not necessary. Uh, you can, of course, view those, those uh, those that voltage and those amp hours uh, but other than that you really don't have too much control over the system itself uh, now demoing this table here now this table is pretty cool it's a it's like a multi-positional table uh, it, of course stows here for when you're using this space like we are now uh, it lays down as a bed and of course is, is usable as a table so from here you're going to go ahead and lift that table out uh, to this position here. This is going to essentially be your uh, your tabletop option. Now from there, you have a little kind of uh, ratchet thing here, and you actually pull, you, you push in on this uh, to actually get that gearing to engage. So it's in its resting position, it's kind of free floating, but to actually get it to tighten up that nut down there, we do need to push in. So once we push in, uh, that tabletop is, is there. Uh, it's nice. You can actually spin the tabletop if you like it that way. Uh, give you a little bit more uh, uh, leg room. You can do that as well. It does need to be in this position though when we are storing it. Um, and then to, to use it as a bed, we are uh, going to pull this pin here. And we're going to, the idea being... I think we're gonna to have to move these cushions out of the way. The idea being is that we're going to sit on these, these black slats here. So with those out of the way, uh, we can kind of move this uh, into that position. And again, you're, you're probably not able to see very much with me in the way. Um, so this is kind of a lot easier to do uh, if you're setting it up. So there is a, a release wheel here that's going to allow that tabletop to extend. And we do just want to make sure we are centered uh, on those black uh, bumpers there, which would be something like that. Uh, and then from there, we would, of course, lock everything down. Uh, we can go ahead and replace these cushions. And we're going to take these back cushions. We would lay those down on this center compartment. Of course, I uh, can't do the other one because I'm standing here, but uh, with this down, those cushions uh, laid out, that is a very uh, sleepable space. Uh, I think that just about covers it here on the inside of the unit. If you do have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Uh, we can generally walk you through most of this stuff uh, over the phone. Uh, enjoy your escape. Thank you very much.